Ladies and gentlemen, the Republican candidate. And Dr. Ben Carson, please come out on the stage. He's standing there as well. Dr. Carson. And lastly, we welcome back to the debate stage, Donald Trump. But Kasich, but can I introduce Kasich? It's so noisy Kasich? in here. Yes, yes. We're going to introduce Ohio Governor John Kasich. The applause so loud here in the, the hall. The applause the so candidates. loud you couldn't hear, we couldn't hear either. That's a good sign for the excitement this evening. Gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight. Just days before voters here in New Hampshire make their decisions. The rules are simple and have been agreed to by all the campaigns. There will be 60 seconds to answer. And if another candidate is mentioned in that answer, that candidate will have 30 seconds to respond. There are green, yellow, and red lights that each candidate will see to signal when time is up, and they will also hear this sound. So let's get started. We welcome you all to the debate stage here tonight. We're going to tackle the issues Americans are most concerned about, the economy, ISIS, homeland security, and here in New Hampshire, some of the most heated rhetoric yet over who is best suited to step in on day one, who has the experience, who has the temperament to be commander in chief. Mr. Trump, Senator Cruz has said about you right here in New Hampshire this week, quote, I don't know anyone who would be comfortable with someone who behaves this way, having his finger on the button. We're liable to wake up one morning, and if he were president, he would nuke Denmark, saying, quote, that's not the temperament of a leader to keep this country safe. I wanted to give you the opportunity to respond to this and to tell the American people tonight why you do have the temperament to be commander in chief. I actually think I have the best temperament. I built a massive corporation. I employ thousands and thousands of people. I've gotten along with people for years and years, have tremendous relationships with many people, including politicians on both sides. Uh, and no matter how you cut it, when I, when I came out, I hit immigration. I hit it very hard. Everybody said, oh, the temperament, because I talked about illegal immigration. Now everybody's coming to me. They're all trying to say, oh, well, he's right. We have to come to him. I hit other things. I talked about Muslims. We have a problem. Nobody else wanted to mention the problem. I brought it up. I took a lot of heat. We have to have a temporary something, because there's something going on that's not good. And remember this, I'm the only one up here. When the war of Iraq, in Iraq, I was the one that said, don't go, don't do it. You're going to destabilize the Middle East. So I'm not one with a trigger. I'm not one with a trigger. Other people up here, believe me, would be a lot faster. But I'll build the military stronger, bigger, better than anybody up here, and nobody's going to mess with us. That I can tell you. Mr. Trump, thank you. I want to bring this back to Senator Cruz then. Because, Senator, you did say of Trump's behavior this week, that's not the temperament of a leader to keep this country safe. Why not? Well, you know, David, the assessment the voters are making here in New Hampshire and across the country is they're evaluating each and every one of us. They are looking to our experience. They're looking to our knowledge. They're looking to our temperament and judgment. They're looking to our clarity of vision and our strength of resolve. The world is getting much more dangerous. We've had seven years with Barack Obama in the Oval Office, a commander in chief that is unwilling even to acknowledge the enemy we're facing. This is a president who in the wake of Paris, in the wake of San Bernardino, will not even use the words radical Islamic terrorism, much less focus on defeating the enemy. I am convinced every individual standing on this stage would make a much better commander in chief than Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. And the primary voters are making the assessment for each of us who is best prepared to keep this country safe, to rebuild the military, to rebuild our Navy, our Air Force, our Army, our Marines, and to ensure that we keep America safe. Senator Cruz, I did ask about Mr. Trump. You said he doesn't have the temperament to be Commander-in-Chief. Do you stand by those words? I think that is an assessment the voters are going to make, and they're going to make it of each and every one of us. They are going to assess who is level-headed, who has clear vision, who has judgment, who can confront our enemies, who can confront the threats we face in this country, and who can have the judgment when to engage and when not to engage, both 
are incredibly important for a commander-in-chief, knowing how to go after our enemies. In the case of Iran, for example, who has the clarity of vision to understand that the Ayatollah Khamenei, when he chants death to America, he means it. We need a president with the judgment and resolve to keep this country safe from radical Islamic terror. Senator terrorists. Cruz, thank you. We're going to continue on this Wasn't notion it? of readiness and am experience. I to, so I'm, am I going to come to back. Respond? I have to if, respond. If you'd like to respond, Mr. Trump. First of all, I respect what Ted just said. But if you noticed, he didn't answer your question. And that's what's going to happen. It's okay. That's what's going to happen with our enemies and the people we compete against. We're going to win with Trump. We're going to win. We don't win anymore. Our country doesn't win anymore. We're going to win with Trump. And people back down with Trump. And that's what I like, and that's what the country is going to like. Mr. Trump, thank, thank you. you. And we're going to continue on this notion of readiness and on experience. But I do want to ask about a headline that was back in the papers again this morning. Dr. Carson, on the day of the Iowa caucuses, the Cruz campaign sent out messages and voicemails saying, quote, breaking news, Dr. Ben Carson will be planning to suspend his campaign following tonight's caucuses. Please inform any Carson caucus goers of this news. But as we can all see, you're still standing here tonight. Late this week, your campaign sent this email, quote, this kind of deceitful behavior is why the American people don't trust politicians. If Senator Cruz does not act, then he clearly represents D.C. values. What kind of action do you think Senator Cruz should take? Well, you know, when I wasn't uh, introduced number two as was the plan, I thought maybe he thought I already had dropped out. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, today is the 105th anniversary or um, 105th birthday of Ronald Reagan. His 11th commandment was not to speak ill of another Republican. So I'm not going to use this opportunity to savage the reputation of Senator Cruz. But I will say, I, I will say, I will say that I was very disappointed uh, that members of his team thought so little of me, that they thought that after having hundreds, if not thousands of volunteers and college students who sacrificed their time and were dedicated to the cause, one even died, to think that I would just walk away 10 minutes before the caucus and say, forget about you guys. I mean, who would do something like that? Now, I don't think anyone on this stage would do something like that. And to assume that someone would, uh, what does that tell you? So, unfortunately, it did happen. It gives us a very good example of certain types of Washington ethics. Washington ethics basically says, if it's legal, you do what you need to do in order to win. That's not my ethics. My ethics is you do what's right. Senator Cruz. <laughs> Dr. Carson, thank you. Senator Cruz, you have said that Dr. Carson and his wife have become friends of yours. I'm curious why you didn't call ahead of time to either the doctor or his wife or have your campaign check in with the other campaign before sending out those messages. Ben is a, a good and honorable man, and Ben and Candy have become friends. He has an amazing life story that has inspired millions, including me. When this transpired, I apologized to him then, and I do so now. Ben, I'm sorry. Let me tell you the facts of what occurred for those who are interested in knowing. On Monday night, about 6.30 p.m., CNN reported that Ben was not going from Iowa to New Hampshire or South Carolina. Rather, he was, quote, taking a break from campaigning. They reported that on television. CNN's political anchors, Jake Tapper and Dana Bash and Wolf Blitzer, said it was highly unusual and highly significant. My political team saw CNN's report breaking news, and they forwarded that news to our volunteers. It was being covered on live television. Now, at the time, I was at the caucuses. I was getting ready to speak at the caucuses, just like Ben was, just like everyone else was. I knew nothing about this. A couple hours later, I found out about it. I was told that Ben was unhappy. I called him that evening because I respect him very, very highly. I didn't reach him that evening. I reached him the next day and apologized. He asked me then, he said, Ted, would you make this apology in public? I said, yes, I will. And I did so. I regret 
that subsequently, CNN reported on that, they didn't correct that story until 9.15 that night. So from 6.30 p.m. to 9.15, that's what CNN was reporting. Subsequent to that initial report, Ben's campaign put out a statement saying that he was not suspending his campaign. I wish that our campaign staff had forwarded that statement. They were unaware of it. I wish that they had. That's why I apologized. Senator Cruz, thank you. We're gonna